to fire employees because they're legal aliens. <laughs> this is completely ridiculous. I mean, back in 2006, the Immigration and Customs Enforcement raided se uh, several packing plants across six states and arrested 1,300 illegal aliens. Now, but what we see now is a complete contrast where we got the Justice Department creating this chilling effect to prevent companies from even questioning whether their employees are legal or not. Now, this is what I would call phase two of Obama's amnesty program. Now, phase one, which was started around 2013, was where we saw Obama tell the Border Patrol that they couldn't, uh, they needed to back off of enforcing immigration laws, which basically opened the border for illegal aliens and human traffickers and what have you. And when a lot of these illegal aliens crossed the border, they got detained by Border Patrol. And after uh, several weeks, Border Patrol actually bought them bus tickets to ship them wherever they wanted to go in the country. So let's say you had a legal alien that got to McAllen, you know, got detained in McAllen for like three weeks. The Border Patrol actually took them to the bus station, bought them tickets to, say, San Antonio, Austin, Dallas, Denver, Wisconsin, wherever they wanted to go. And in exchange for the bus tickets, the illegal aliens were given these immigration court dates that they promised to appear to. But a lot of these court dates were like three or four years in advance, and 90% of the illegal aliens are not going to show up anyway. So now what we have is phase two, where the Obama administration is scaring companies away from even questioning the legal status of their employees. So once the illegal aliens get into the country and get settled in, get jobs, get families, what have you, then they don't even have to worry about ever getting deported because they're never going to risk losing their job. Once again, this is Kit Daniels with InfoWars.com. And all you ISIS people threatening us, hey, we're not a French newspaper, okay? We got people that have taken your asses out in this building right now. We're armed to the teeth, and we're not scared. You got that, you sons of bitches? This is Texas. You want to threaten me, you can go straight to hell. You understand that? Never water yourself down just because someone can't handle you at 100 proof. It's the Alex Jones Show, because there's a war on for your mind. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. Hi, I'm Shane Steiner. A lot of you have been following my progress using Supermail Vitality. The last 19 weeks has been an incredible experience. I was feeling a little down and lethargic during the holidays, and none of the supplements that I was taking were doing any good. That's when my longtime friend from high school, Alex Jones, introduced me to Supermail Vitality. I was a little skeptical at first. Not only would I have the energy to work out and go to the gym, but it, it was actually the changes were happening to my body. Uh, a lot more rapidly. My whole mood, my libido, everything had completely changed. The concentrated organic herbs, they stimulate your natural systems to produce the natural hormones that you need. I just really wanted to, to bulk up and hit it hard and I went in for about the first five weeks and was lifting heavy weight and just really hitting it hard and I gained 20 pounds of muscle immediately. Since that, I've decided I was going to lose some weight and slim down. I just changed up my workout a little bit and 35 pounds came off. Folks, this is not a joke. This is not a gimmick. It's real. Super Male Vitality. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. 
Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Most forms of vitamin B12 are highly processed and synthetic and could not be properly absorbed by the body. That's why for real results, so many are having to turn to painful B12 injections, which are known to have higher absorption rates. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12, methylcobalamin, the same kind used in B12 injections, and adenosylcobalamin. Secret 12 is simply taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Discover the secret. Secret 12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. <laughs> And welcome back. We have two members of the incredible team of our great sponsor, Head Down Products. You can find them at hdfirearms.com. We have Lee and Ryan, and I thank you guys for coming out to our studio here in Austin. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Okay, so you've been here for a little while. Just tell us, what do you think about the city of Austin? It's great. Very diverse. Got a lot of culture to it. Had a really, really good time here so far. It's really, really more than what I thought. So you were carrying, and you encountered the TSA at the airport. What was that experience like for you guys? That was pretty interesting. It was, um, it was actually a little easier than we thought getting into it. Uh, you know, we were, you know, being in the industry, we were a little nervous about it. Right. Uh, you know, we've done it before, but more in the competition shooting realm and things like that. Yes. We had everything lined up. So it really wasn't too bad. I mean, the TSA was actually very professional. It's not the normal that you hear from TSA. Very cut and dry. I think I'll start carrying just about everywhere I go when it's more on a personal level of traveling. Oh, there you go. And so let's start with that since we're talking about this personal carry because we hear a lot of people say, well, why do you need a firearm? You know, if you have an instant, why don't you call the police? So let's say, you know, there's somebody out there right now and they just see you guys, you know, two big tough guys. Why in the world would you need to carry a firearm? Well, and this is my particular position on it. I have the utmost respect for police officers. They do things that nobody else wants to do. They put themselves in danger every day. But the reality of it is most of the time they're there to write the report, clean the mess up. You have to be self-sufficient. You have to be self-protected of yourself or maybe a loved one or maybe a fellow citizen that doesn't have the opportunity to protect themselves. You should exercise your Second Amendment right. You should take advantage of that just as you do on your First Amendment. One thing about, you know, I think some, some people miss about the Second Amendment rights is, you know, like, like Lee was saying, the, the police can't always be there. And... You know, you have to take it, take that responsibility for yourself to protect yourself, your family. And, you know, the police can't keep you safe. Only we can do that. So, you, you know, uh, the firearm is the ultimate equalizer to be able to protect yourself, your property and your loved ones. So, you know, it shouldn't be a complicated argument, but somehow it gets twisted to be something that it isn't. And Ryan, you were telling me off camera that you're also a part of a group. Yeah. Armed Citizens United. Um, you know, Lee is a big part of that. Uh, we wanted to get, you know, somebody who was in the manufacturing of, you know, black rifles, which is, you know, the, the, the scary weapon of, uh, you know, all, all of the media, they really demonize that, that particular firearm and, you know, head down products where, you know, is a big manufacturer. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to have that perspective from somebody like Lee and, you know, really be able to understand why is this being attacked? We understand that it doesn't make sense on our side. But how can we get this out to the public? How can we educate them? And how can we get the youth to understand the philosophies behind, you know, uh, you know, protecting yourself and, and having the ability to have a firearm? 
So in this modern time, let's just say what it is, since uh, post-Sandy Hook, you know, there's been a lot of demonization of the firearms industry, particularly the AR-15, also the AK-47 going to the, uh, the Aurora shooting. And anybody who takes the time can go to the FBI's own statistics and see that those type of rifles, those military-style rifles, uh, italicized-style rifles, uh, those are used in a very low percentage of crimes. You're much more likely to be beaten to death with a hammer or a blunt object and <laughs> yeah. be stabbed and to be shot with a, a military style rifle, especially a fully automatic one. Right. So since uh, Sandy Hook, how has that affected your business, if any? Well, we found that it, you know, when the government came out and said they were going to ban, you know, the ability for you to exercise your Second Amendment, ri Second Amendment rights on specific weapons, our business got really, really busy. Um, I think what we've really seen is, is people becoming more knowledgeable you know, everybody wants to call an AR-15 an assault rifle. AR doesn't stand for assault rifle. So the media has really twisted everything in a mannerism to, as Ryan said, demonize it. As you said, to demonize, make it the most worst, horrible thing you can get. The reality of it is th that weapon system is not dangerous per se. It's the person that's utilizing it. And that's what we really need to start focusing on is, is the people. And how do we fix that kind of situation? It, because a car runs over somebody, is it the car's fault or is it the gentleman that's behind the wheel that's drunk? Is that his fault? And as you speak on that, I don't know if you guys recall uh, Elliot Roger, who's out in California. This guy, he shot people, he stabbed people, and he ran people over with his vehicle. But at the end of the day, nobody said, let's ban cars or knives. They said, let's ban the firearms. Right. And another thing that's, that, that's you know, notable about that is he was called, if you remember the, the coverage of that, he was called a gunman, but he wasn't. Nobody said anything about hit and runs. Or, mm -hmm. You know, they didn't they didn't tag him with that. They tagged him with gunmen. And that's strategic. That is purposeful. And they do that to demonize the gun, to, uh, you know, continuously uh, brainwash, as, uh, you know, people have said, some high up political figures. They want to brainwash people to to really demonize the tool and take no personal responsibility for action. You know, th this is a personal responsibility issue if if. You know, we can pick up a, a knife, a gun, get in our car. We can slaughter people at, any, at every turn. It, it's, it's, not, it's just a tool. I can set my gun that I'm carrying right now. I can set it right here, and nothing's going to happen. We, you know, something else we've noticed. Since we started sponsoring the show, as y'all welcomed us in like family, what we have seen is a lot more people out there really looking at, oh, my gosh, you know, the media scared me to death for so many years about this type of, of gun Maybe it's not really that bad. Tell me about it. Educate me. And what we've really found is education is the key. And that's really one of the big things we're head down is, is educating the people. We want you to know what you need to do. We want you to be safe with your firearm, not because it's a, a, a pistol or a rifle, just in general. We want you to be safe with your kids. We want you to be able to store them properly. That's things that I grew up as was common sense. People don't they weren't taught that way. They weren't raised that way. So we really want to push that to the public and let them understand that's what we need to do. You need to be educated about your gun. Just don't go buy one. Get educated. Yeah, and that's why I always tell people, don't just buy it and, you know, start packing it. You know, take it out to the range. You know, 100%. Understand how it operates. Now, I know you guys have a lot of veterans who work over at Head Down. And I want to get your opinion on this recent shooting that we saw at the, uh, the recruiting station. And the one we have here in Austin, myself and Joe Biggs went out there and carried you know, days after when, you know, trying to protect the people because nobody went out there to protect the guys. They dropped off a squad car and, you know, as pretty much a scarecrow and nobody was there to protect them. And of course they couldn't protect themselves, even though it had a big sign that said arm forces. I'm like, they can't be armed in the right. armed forces. Armed forces, building. but they don't have anything to arm so, themselves with. And we, we've all seen the images, the, you know, the gun free zone sign with bullets all around it, you know, as, uh, you know, guys who have uh, very close ties to the uh, military community. What did that make you feel? Well, you, it, it makes me feel sad that our government impedes the ability for our soldiers to carry a weapon. The most highly trained individuals in the world, the finest military armed services we have, but they decline to let them carry weapons. It's really sad to me. I, I um, It's actually insulting. I mean, these are the people that go overseas and fight for our rights and our way of life, but they can't be protected by themselves here. And given no one wants to really believe that this is America, we're not going to have to worry about this kind of thing. People, we have to worry about this now. You're seeing this time and time again with the attacks on police officers, 
military base. It's here. We need to recognize that and address it. <laughs> the word that comes to mind is just stupidity for me. Like, you know, just echoing the things that he's saying, but maybe in a different way, you know, <laughs> it's the armed services, it's the military. And they don't have the ability to protect themselves at their own place of employment. Uh, that's just stupid. There's no 